The Holy Gospel lesson for this Sunday, the Palm Sunday, a gospel compilation. As we read this responsively, the congregation will rise. Jesus and his disciples were nearing Jerusalem. And when they reached Bethanage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of them with these instructions. Go into the village opposite, where you will find the donkey, and there is a full size of it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone has a donkey that is too big to carry, let him come and borrow it from me. If anyone speaks to you, say, Our master needs them, and he will let you take them at once. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door out in the open street. And they untied it, and those who stood there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. This was to fulfill the prophecy which says, Tell the daughter of Zion, Here is your king, who comes to you in gentleness, riding on a donkey, riding on a foal, the beast of burden. and brought the donkey and her foal. They laid their clothes on them, and Jesus sat upon it. As he was now drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives and entering Jerusalem, the whole city went wild with excitement. People asked, Who is this? And the crowd replied, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Crowds of people carpeted the road with their cloaks, and some cut leafy branches from the trees to spread in his path. Then the crowd that went ahead and the others that came behind raised the shout, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming! Hosanna in the highest! Hosanna in the heavens! Peace in heaven heaven and and glory glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered them, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. Holy and powerful God, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us a sign of his victory a sign and a symbol of both his martyrdom and majesty. Amen. Our first reading today on this Palm Sunday comes to us from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the 50th chapter, reading from verse 4. You've heard me talk before about the prophecies in the Old Testament which pointed to Jesus Christ. Today we read one of the main prophecies, probably one of the clearest prophecies we have in the Old Testament. We'll hear this week yet again of how Christ goes before the Sanhedrin. He stands before Pilate. He is mocked. He is abused, ridiculed the very thing that Isaiah prophesies about some 700 years before it happened. Listen to these words and ponder the accuracy of this prophecy. Hear these words. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher and skill to console the weary with the word in the morning. He sharpened my hearing that I might listen like one who is taught. Therefore, no insult can wound me. I have set my face like flint, for I know that I shall not be put to shame, because one who will clear my name is at my side. Who dare argue against me? Let us confront one another. Who will dispute my cause? Let Let him him come forward. forward. The Lord God will help me. Who then can prove me guilty? 
Our epistle lesson today comes to us from Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi, the second chapter, reading from verse 5, and reads as follows. What we have to remember, okay, when Jesus was conceived, okay, we know that, we confess it in the creed, conceived by the Holy Spirit or conceived by the Holy Ghost, that begins his state of humiliation, all right? The Creator comes to be part of the created, Jesus Christ laid aside his divine throne, his position next to God, and comes to earth to walk among us. Think of the Old Testament. Every time we read the Old Testament prophets, they preach their sermons, they give their messages to the people of God, and their message always follows the theme, return to God, return to God, come back to God, come back to God. Here in the New Testament, God comes to us. Hear these words of Paul. We read this responsively. Philippians chapter 2. Let your bearing toward one another arise out of your life in Christ Jesus. For the divine nature was his from the first, yet he did not think to snatch at the quality with God, but made himself nothing, assuming the nature of a slave. Bearing the human likeness revealed in human form, he humbled himself and in obedience accepted death, even death on a cross. Therefore God raised him to the heights and bestowed on him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and in the depths, and every tongue confess to Jesus Christ his Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Congregation may be seated. As it is Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday, it is right and fitting that on this day, even though we celebrate the triumphal entry of Christ into Jerusalem, we also remember his destination, his destination of passion, his destination of suffering, his destination of death on the cross, so that you and I might be forgiven. Notice that the Passion Gospel is read responsively. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, the Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priest and the elders of the people assembled in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, If I deliver him over to you, so that you can for him thirty pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't need me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, 
which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When he had sung this, they, they went out, they sung a hymn, and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Holy and powerful God, we give you thanks because of our salvation. Christ was obedient even to death on the cross. The tree of shame was made the tree of glory, and where life was lost, their life has been restored. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, our Son, our Lord, through Him accept our sacrifice of grace, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood. We continue our service on the bottom of page four in your bulletin. Like the apostles themselves on the night Christ instituted his holy supper, we too have been fed upon bread and wine, which through the mystery of the sacramental union is the body and blood of Christ. The final hours of our Lord's life are ebbing away. He will be betrayed, beaten, denied, and rejected. As he was arrested and led away, so also we remove from our presence his body and blood and the vessels of this sacramental meal. Jesus told them this very night, you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, And all the other disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, May your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed for the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. The betrayer is at hand. Christ will be arrested and led away. As Jesus suffers, joyful sounds are not to be heard, and our music and songs take on a more somber tone. Therefore, our service books, which lead us in joyful worship, are removed, along with the stands that hold them. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now, the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. 
Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. In that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Am I leading a rebellion that you come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. The chief priest and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, You have said so, Jesus replied, but I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will have the light of life and will never walk in darkness. The events of Good Friday snuffed out the life of Jesus, the light of the world, as even creation itself was dark when our Lord suffered, so we extinguish our candles and remove them. We now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him and said, But he denied it before them all and said, Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him, and said to the people there, He denied it again with an oath. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them. Immediately, a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the words Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders, saying, What is that to us? They replied. That is your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. 
Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. We present our offerings to God to support the ministry of the word, to carry out the mission that God has given his church, and to return to God a portion of what he has given to us. The religious leaders in Jesus' day misused the offering given by God's people. Their purposes were corrupted by their own greed and jealousy. While our motives to give are good, theirs were not. And so, in remembrance, we remove our offerings and the vessels that contain them. We Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priest and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked, for he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Why? What crime has he committed? When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of the soldiers around him. They stripped him and put on a scarlet robe on him. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. They spit on him. They took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. Our altar is where our Lord Jesus serves us as both host and meal at his banquet feast. The coverings are made of fine linen, material appropriate for feasting with our king. As our king's body was stripped by the Roman soldiers, so our altar and table are stripped of their covering. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. 
When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right, one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him, saying, In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him from noon until three in the afternoon darkness came over all the land about three in the afternoon Jesus cried out in a loud voice Eli Eli lama sabachthani which means when some of those standing there heard this they said he's calling for Elijah Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook. The rocks split and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Jesus has died and his body has been removed from the cross. Those who cared for him in life now care for him in death. With love and care, they wipe away the visible signs of his torment, blood, dirt, and spit. It is fitting, therefore, to clean the altar of our Savior, for it is where his body and blood rests in the sacrament of his supper. We the next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priest and the Pharisees went to Pilate and said, Take a guard, Pilate answered, go. Make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. 
the congregation will rise for the sending. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.